Hey guys, hey guys, Jesus Name Ministries. Uh, I just want to come on here for a few minutes. Uh, I've been uh, doing some study and uh, looking at some of the David Bernard stuff uh, and kind of going through some of the, the topics that I've been talking about and kind of trying to see where if that was at and where he's at on some of this stuff. Um, and I, and I know I've got uh, lots of people that, that want to defend the UPCI uh, who hasn't even went and looked at where their church really stands on these issues. But uh, just from what they've heard, they'll, they'll argue the fact. Um, but anyhow, one of the things I wanted to point out is the fact that how weak, how weak. Um, and, and, you know, I just went through, you know, how do we know the Bible's true? And I, I listened to him in a, a very... Um, uh, high-level education scholar, which is uh, at, at uh, Urshan uh, College. He's a teacher professor there who teaches that subject. And so when you look at, listen to the interview and you look at that, um, talk about, you know, how the, the books were brought in today that we have that we now call the Bible uh, that had met the criteria of what we call the canon. Um, and so just just listening to them and, and and how they're bringing forth you know how we should believe that the the, the scriptures are of God and, and and such um I'm not making a comment either way on that that topic but what I am going to emphasize here and why I brought it up is the fact that the canon it made it to the canon it made it to through the scrutiny of all these 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 rules and and, and as a scale um they were able to say, yes, we, we can include this because we have sufficient evidence that we think that this is um, a real work of God, okay? Uh, that it's a true, in, in the author, whoever the author was, that the manuscript uh, is, is in, I don't know, concert with the other stuff or uh, however they, they made all those, those uh, boundaries. Um, but the point is, is, is they put high level of, emphasis on the canon okay so when i look at other subjects and this one here is our church organizations biblical episode 62 from the apostolic line in the 21st century you can find it on youtube um, but as he explains and i'm just going to do a couple excerpts here of, of their conversation and, and how um, dr david bernard is, is explaining some of this stuff and you know, immediately I thought of the canon and the way he's explaining it would not even come close to being canonized with the way he's presenting it because there's not enough evidence. There's not enough. And he, even, he even points out in the other conversations how by, by two or three, the mouth of two or three witnesses, and he uses those things. And you'll see that on here, he'll use the assembling of yourselves together to, to form his character of a church. Um, and using that as the basis, and I'm not saying that's the only basis that he's using, but that's the only argument he puts up to make his uh, qualification here. So just just listen for, for just a, a bit here. The local church biblical? Well, certainly Hebrews 10 says, don't forsake the assuming of yourself together. Um, as if that's sufficient enough to say that the, 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 the church is instituted by God. That's what he just said. If we stop here, he has made that argument over Hebrews 10. So that would not even come close. They would laugh you away on any canonization of that comment. So, and this is, this is the big response that you'll get when, when they say, well, you got to go to church to be saved. No, you do not have to go to church to be saved. Well, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. The assembling. I can assemble at the coffee shop with two or three people gathered in his name. He does miracles. So you're going to tell me that couldn't qualify as the assembling or meeting together to satisfy what that writer said in one place. So again, two or three witnesses or by two or three immutable things let everything be established. And it took in Moses' law, where they're getting a lot of this, is the fact that it took two or three witnesses to convict someone to death. So go back to the law. That's where a lot of this is coming forward. And it's talking about two or three witnesses and, and, and two or three 
uh, to establish a word of truth. So when you look at that, that's what we're talking about here. So now let's, let's back up a bit. We're talking about a church organization whom this guy represents 100% total bias. He has a church of, of, of millions of people in attendance across the world. And these people, there is over 46,000, over 46,000 ministers who pay close to $500 a year for membership. Now you add that up, you do the math. And, and that's, that's the kind of money they bring in, not to count their, their biblical uh, Christian publishing company that is a multi-million dollar um, business in itself, in its own right. And, and over all the churches, if they have 46,000 ministers, you, you can see there's, there's about 23, I think, thousand churches across, and, and they all give in to this organization. So when you're talking about this guy being canonized and what he's saying, we've got a major problem, okay? And I'm not saying that this guy's a bad guy, but I am telling you, he's speaking on something for his own benefit, for the collective bias of a business ran, which makes millions and millions of dollars. Um, so when you look at that, you can't say this guy's the authority on it, okay? So just want to get that out there. But my local church, the structure of that church, whatever the church government is, if they have a church board or they don't have a church board, if they have a business meeting of the congregation or they don't, if they have a Sunday school teacher or a Sunday school superintendent or a youth pastor or, you know, those things are, do they have a church building? Do they have a choir? Do they have a praise team? Do they have, uh, you know, pews? Do they have chairs? You know, none of that is biblical in the sense of the Bible requiring it. So what none of that is biblical as the Bible requiring it, okay? In that sense, the particular form of church government of that local assembly is man-made. Man-made. That's all I've been seeing. So we would say the local church is God's idea, but the precise form is human constructed. So I still have a problem with the principle of the church is God's idea. But when you look at that, let's, let's, let's dissect that statement because let's look biblical because Jesus said, my church, there's not a, no gates of hell will not come against or prevail against my church. Was he talking about a physical church? Let's talk about the woman at the well. He said, the father seeketh such to worship him. Who? Those that worship him in spirit and in truth. Did he say at the congregational church down the road? What about the, the building, that, that the, the, the temple that the, the apostles told Jesus, said, look at the great. He said, not one stone's going to be left. That happened in 70 AD. All those came down, those stones, every one prophesied by Jesus, it happened. What was Jesus talking about? My church is not a physical church. And if you know your scripture, and if you go through the gospels, you'll see, and you'll go to Nicodemus. You'll look at John 3. When you look at John 3, 1 through 8, you'll talk about where Jesus said, that it's born of the flesh is a flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is of the spirit. And Jesus said, you must be born again. You're already flesh. You don't have to be reborn in the flesh. That's what Jesus was pointing to. That's what Jesus alluded to in all of his teachings with the apostles, saying, Spirit, we're preparing for spiritual. And Jesus said, upon this rock will I build my church. Upon this confession of what? Faith. It wasn't about a physical church. Never was. And, and when the disciples, and you want to argue with the disciples, Acts, and now they set up church structure and things like that, you can't say that that was the will of God. Did that exist? Did that pro, pro for? You say, well, you know, if God was behind it, it would have never to cease to exist. We would have still had that church in Jerusalem today. That's my feeling about it. That's what I know because what God puts there is not going to be torn down unless God never meant it. There it was. So that's my view of it. 
You can, you can take your view, but I'm going to tell you what, I, my view is based off of Matthew 25, or 20, 25, 26, Luke 22, 25, and 26. And you'll find the other one in Mark, and as I've said again before on the uh, uh, this last uh, sermon or, or message that I put out, is the fact that I, I, I'll, I'll give you the fact that you can say, well, Mark could have been pulled, or, or Matthew could have been pulled off of Mark. So maybe that that could be, so I'm like, okay, but there's two still, two different writers. And Jesus said, this ain't going to happen among you because this was where the, the, the mother of James and John said, hey, I want one of my sons here on this side of your, your throne and this side of power. And Jesus said, that stuff is not going to happen in my kingdom. There's no hierarchy. And he, and he said in Matthew 23, ye are all brethren. You're all at the same level. Nobody got a different Holy Ghost in the ministry as the saints got. We were all commissioned to spread the gospel. And, and man wants to construct a hierarchy because they want to feel important. They want to, to increase above one another. That is human effect. All right, so that, that's my two cents with biblical backing. Doesn't mean it's wrong. That doesn't mean you shouldn't go to the local church. Doesn't mean you can just pick and choose whatever church you want because, hey, it's all man-made. No, it is the local church is our way of fulfilling biblical principles. And the fact that everything is not specified, I think, is intentional. That local church thing is not a commandment anywhere in the scripture, even in Acts. Just because they did it, how about when we go to Acts 15? If you start at the beginning of Acts 15, you'll see that the, the Gentiles had to be circumcised to be saved. So if that's all the manuscript we got, does that mean that we should do it? When Jesus spoke about in the Gospels about you're going to be free indeed. What are you free from? Everything. All man. Let's go on. That's God's way of saying you have Christian liberty. I go back to Romans 14. A lot of things are left to our discretion. And in fact, Matthew 16, uh, talking in the context of church government and planting a church, grow, building the church, Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Then that's not unlimited authority, but I think that's his way of saying to the church. You think when you make certain decisions to fulfill my plan, I will honor them. I will back. Now understand his words. He thinks that is God's way. That is David Bernard's thought. He has no biblical backing for what he just thinks, because he would have versed the biblical backing. And just like Paul, at least Paul, and I, I credit Paul for this, he said, not I, but the Lord, or this is me, Paul saying it, not the Lord. So if it ain't God, it's not a commandment. But Mr. Bernard here is making it a commandment because he thinks. So this is what's propagated to the churches. This is why this becomes in on its face Man's tradition, if that was the case, and what Mr. Bernard just said, and if that was the case, then why did Jesus call the Pharisees and the scribes hypocrites? Because that's their thought to Scripture. So if it was okay, and God just gave them that flexibility, why would Jesus be telling them it was wrong and that they were hypocrites? Let's go on. Back them up. So even though, say, a local church... Now, I want to back up here. I just missed it. But what, what he said was that the Lord's told Peter what he binds on heaven and earth will be bound in... Or what he binds on earth will be bound in heaven. And he said himself that he doesn't think it was eternal authority or extended authority. But what Mr. Bernard just did is, 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 in, is, is chose his own reasoning, his own bias to the organization of a church locally here on earth to, to add the fact that he thinks it goes as far as the local church and governance of the local church. So this is Mr. Bernard's thoughts. 
This is his way of, of instituting it. And he thinks that we can go as far as this, but not any further. So that is his and, and many other, I'm sure, that, that have colluded with this, right? Um, and collusion's not, not negative always, but the fact is, is in agreement, I'll say. Uh, so he feels that that. Now, I feel that what Jesus was talking about was just that. And when on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2.38, that started there and it stopped there. The Holy Ghost came over Peter and gave the uh, formula for salvation, which was repent, be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is backed up by John 3, 1 through 8, when Jesus talked to Nicodemus. And the, the same thing happened, the new wine, Jesus' first miracle. We can, we can go right in and, and validate this with scripture and right to Jesus, which none of this could be validated by Mr. Bernard. And this is why I have a problem with it. Church could have, like, let, let's say you have two local churches in the same city. They have two different buildings. Uh, they might have two different forms of church government. They might have two different times where they have church. They might have two different types of children's programs. All those things could be different, but both could be the will of God. And if you're a member of that church, it could be the will of God to be, you to be faithful could to be. that one church and not go to the other church and vice versa. Could be. So even though there are differences, that's on purpose. So I believe God, the New Testament doesn't specify all the details of a local church because God recognizes that could vary based on culture, time, location, personality, needs, you know, what work. It does not specify because it's not important and it's not commanded. That's why it does not specify. Mr. Bernard here is stretching what do, you, what do you call that? Uh, there's a, a word, C word. Uh, he, he's, he's conflating, right? So that's what Mr. Bernard is doing because he has bias to an organization of a local assembly that feeds into the larger scale of a multi-million dollar church, if not billions today. So these are, these are the problems that I have today with this type of thing. So... What happens is it pipes right down, and here's the, here's the crux of it, right? Here's, here's what I'm totally against. Because the head of this is saying these things, and it's propagated through all the churches, the, the 26,000 or more churches out there that, that has a leadership and, and, and a pastor and all these other things and the way they have structured it, uh, because of that, all the people that go to these churches, which I think is estimate maybe 2 million today, across the world, um, and, and not all of them probably are, are, are adhered to it, but the, the point is, is that these people are telling all the rest of the people that if you don't go to church, you're going to hell. This is a problem, and it starts at the top, and this is why we have a problem here. This is why this stuff is propagated like this, because there's a bias and a, and a monetary gain here and, and this is where, and he even talks. And if you want to look at that, I done told you the episode. He talks how, how there's a, a financial division where they go after money and all these things. My friend, I'm telling you what, you read Matthew 23 and you're going to find a lot of this church, a lot of this construct, what he is accepting and, and, and trying to conflate or, or push out as biblical is very wrong in the eyes of Jesus Christ. All right, thank you guys for listening. It, it's, it, I'm not trying to say that all this is bad, but make note, be aware of what's going on here and do not allow man to put convictions that are not of this Bible and not of God especially.